The sound system concept first became popular in the 1940s and 50s, originating in Kingston, Jamaica. DJs would load up a truck with a generator, turntables, huge speakers, and set up street parties. The way I see it, uh, Jamaican sound system culture began in about the 50s, um, and it was, originally it wasn't reggae, or even ska, this is pre, Reggae and ska, it really became a thing. The sound system itself, the bins, the presentation of the music. Like I said, they'd have um, MCs toasting. So, you know, in Jamaica, they were the first MCs. And obviously, rap music was influenced by those first MCs, like King Stitt. You know, it was real old school, old school. You know, we're going back 50, 60 years. It was more about the music as far as I see it, and, and not so much about how big your sound was. Because back then the sound systems weren't particularly hi-fi in Jamaica, they were, you know, they'd make a bit of noise, but they weren't high-powered or um, that sort of big high-powered, you know, 16 scoop sound systems. That sort of came later. I think, in, you know, when sound system culture emerged out of Jamaica, that there wasn't big sound systems like that. Like if you go and look at the pictures of the first sound systems in Jamaica, they were just sometimes a mono stack, just like this. You know, that was it. The emphasis on the big sound came later, and that, as, as far as I can tell, that developed in the UK. As time progressed, sonic capabilities and hardware became better quality, and the race had begun to further create sound systems that were bigger, louder, and more unique. Sound system culture quickly became global. As Caribbean populations migrated, the unique sounds of reggae, dancehall and dub were beginning to find their way into Western cultures. Like all Kiwis, we ended up going living in London. So I went to London in the year 2000, uh, and I spent about three years approximately with a week gap in between coming back. I went there and uh, fortunate enough got to play, so at the time I was playing jungle music, but anyone who knows me from jungle, I, I kind of come from the reggae slant on it. Uh, I've always collected reggae and dubs, I've always had that passion uh, for the skank and that sort of iry part of it. I'm from the UK and I moved over here in 2005, so like 15 years ago. So before that, um, I used to live in Brighton in England. When I was a lot younger, me and my mates discovered reggae sound systems around the same time that there was a massive explosion with house music, um, illegal raves, all that, the kind of like scenes that were going on in the 90s. Sound system culture in the UK has played a vital part in global reggae history. From the moment that young Caribbean immigrant, Duke Vincent Forbes, set up his rudimentary system in 1954 London and started to blast ska and calypso selections at chest-shaking volumes, British systems have remained at the forefront of the movement influencing pretty much every subset of UK dance music since. The 70s and early 80s was, was when sound system culture moved to the UK and naturally it was a different place and so they kind of developed their own scene over there and I think New Zealand sound system culture now is more influenced by the UK than, than Jamaica. The progression of sound system culture in Aotearoa, yeah, we sort of went Jamaica to the UK and then here. Um, I think, you know, um, the Jamaican roots of sound system culture don't get forgotten in this country, but there's less emphasis on Jamaican sound system culture. Um, and, you know, that goes back to the history of sound systems in the UK and the Jamaican and Caribbean immigrants coming over and they had to create their own place um, to, to get together and to, to listen to this type of music and I think it's certain degree it's the same, same. I started to look for other events, other activities relating to music and including purchasing music and that revolved around the record store in High Street called Echo Records. You know I remember seeing a jungle, live jungle act in 1995 called Spring Hill Jack and that was the first time I'd ever seen Live Jungle and it was at the Ministry on like a huge sound system. The Ministry sound system kind of became world famous, especially within like the drum and bass scene. Well, the first time I ever went to a gig was the first gig I went to at the Ministry and I just got hit, hooked straight away, you know. Well, that's how I got hooked on drum and bass, but the sound system side of it. When I first moved down to Christchurch, 
I got involved in electronic music just as a punter. Um, it was real strong back in the day. Um, lots of different gigs. I used to go to uh, Dubwise gigs and um, Unity and all those kind of things. My first like Roots Reggae sound system experience was uh, Vital Sound, and I think that was probably the jumping off point for me to get involved in building a sound and um, the power of sound system. And 2007, potentially 2008, I started collecting records from uh, Galaxy Records on Manchester Street and um, sneaking into the old Run at Red jungle sessions on the old Thursday night at Double Happy. Well, if you think of Christchurch history in terms of musically, um, dance music and bass music. So we are the base capital of New Zealand dance music, and we always have been. Some might argue otherwise. Um, Hip-hop, I would say, would be the exception because North Island has claimed that one pretty heavily, and I respect that. But in terms of uh, early reggae, uh, jungle, drum and bass, all that, especially drum and bass, you know, we're, we've been where it started in New Zealand, you know. So you, you, you take sound system music being bass orientated, it's a no-brainer really that it's taken off. If you think of New Zealanders and Kiwis, we're DIY crew, aren't we? We like to make shit. We can do it ourselves. We look over the fence of people doing things, and we go, oh, I can do that, and I can make it with these hands, you know. So again, that's a no-brainer. Take bass music where it began, Take the fact that there's this cool thing that you can make and do it yourself. You're always going to get a better vibe through a sound system you built than one that you um, that you bought. So, for me, it's, that's why it's taken off. Christchurch seems to have an affinity with dance, electronic, and bass culture. There seems to be a congregation going on, and in some ways, that's maybe parallel to the conservative nature of Christchurch. Um, once people clap onto something that they're really into, they tend to get really passionate about it. I think it probably stems from the older days of like rave culture, a more festival culture. Rave culture became very big in Christchurch, you know, in the early early to mid '90s. How is it that a movement that started in the Caribbean in the 1940s that helped shape the UK dance music scene for generations found its way here to Ototahi Aotearoa. I met um, a very good friend of mine, Matt O'Brien, who was DJing on RDU. I started buying a certain style of music that I really enjoyed and he was encouraging me to come along to the events, the house parties he was putting on down at Carlton Mill Corner and the flats that he was living in. So I could just got on board, I instantly found myself a place there. I would essentially help do, pack the system in, pack the system out. I'd always had an interest in reggae music, mostly roots music. Slowly but surely, I was that annoying 18 year old kid hassling the DJ, what's this tune, what's that tune? And at that time, you know, I didn't even know how to roll up a, a cable, a speaker cable properly. So it was, I was entering a whole new world. I linked up with Dirty Harry from King Beat and helped on a, a couple of loads. And, and I remember a day watching them starting to build a, a, a double 18 in one of the squats. And um, I think a, a distinct memory was um, putting polyurethane plastic up in one of his living rooms in a big old flat and packing in SB2s, like sort of this size here, and running that until dawn. Um, just essentially getting into that idea of, um, I think at the time it was more club culture, an extension of club culture, and then more into what we started to develop was rave, rave culture, which moved out into the industrial areas of Christchurch and up into the hills, up into the Port Hills around here. And so the congregation began, from warehouse to wide open fields. A dedicated collective of youth began expressing themselves at a variety of locations through diverse forms of electronica, graphic design, visual productions, and sound systems. So the difference between a sound system gig and a, and a dance party that people are probably used to going to is if you think of a live band being a whole bunch of people being live musicians on stage and the energy that you get from that, you know. The energy that you get from sound system is not only the time and energy that's being put into building the sound system, but all the people loading the bins. The effort that's gone into the gig, you know, from the joint roller to the bin carrier to the 
person putting up the camo nets to all that energy, because there's a huge ton of work that goes in. It doesn't just happen on the night, you know what I mean? You've got a full day of prep, you've got a full day of packing, you got pack out at the end of the gig, and then the next day. And then if you start thinking of the, the sound that you're actually going to get, you're not going to get that at a standard um, you know, dance party, mostly because of the scoop scan, you know? So you combine a whole bunch of energy, and, and even history, if you like, into an event, and then the build of an of a organic home-built sound system, and then you put wicked reggae music, dub, and jungle, and, and uh, you know, you're gonna get an energy that you're not gonna get at any other type of dance party. So. I think a huge part of sound system culture in Christchurch especially, especially, was built up from the likes of Ryan with Subtle doing dubstep gigs from day dot when dubstep was just coming alive in the UK. I think that's had a huge part of Christchurch growing as a, I suppose, sound system culture, if you want to say that, or a sound system community. Um, also the likes of Bass Freaks and stuff like that, who have been doing this stuff for years. And once again, the likes of Richie and stuff like that with Kindred when he was running that, you know, like, those guys have been around for a long time. I went back to England and spoke to a mate. He was like, why don't you build one then? And it hadn't really kind of crossed my mind. I kind of, I got a bit of technical knowledge, so I thought I'd better do it. But sort of did that and slowly, slowly, but surely started to link up with the people in Christchurch and did a few, did a few gigs of that sound system, got a few people over. Um, and I've just always really loved the music and the sort of positive experience that you get from dancing together with people. When I came back from, uh, from living over there, I thought to myself, oh, I reckon I can do this, I can, I can build. Yeah, a friend at the time called Goobs, he was running a sound system locally. He was the only guy around that time into sound systems out there playing jungle music. So I approached him and I got to ask him a few questions and yeah, he sent me in the right direction. One of my last weekends in Dunedin, I did a gig with uh, supporting Luciano, Jamaican artist and messenger from Christchurch. Was also supporting at that gig. We linked behind stage. I said, I'm moving to Christchurch the following weekend. I did. I called him up at RDU and the rest is history. The size of clubs I was using at the time, the sound wasn't really up to scratch. The driving factor was because there was, we didn't have access to a sound system and I wanted to throw parties. The speakers that I was buying were just no good, they just kept blowing up, weren't loud enough, weren't nice enough, you know, weren't good enough. So I decided to buy some big J-bins and then start building some more. I thought it was a good idea to introduce the sound system at the birth of that scene and build the scene sound system focused. Yeah, just fell in love with it when I was over in the UK. I was like, man, no one's really doing this back home. I want to take this back home, what I've learned. Basically, long story short, came home, got introduced to people like Ill Figs from Subtle Sound, Goobs, Messenger from Bass Factory, um, Richie from what was Kindred Sounds. And I was just like, whoa, shit, this is huge. Like, this is such a huge culture here already. I actually initially started building and then met those guys. So it was kind of like really cool to actually see people with hand-built systems and big PAs doing what I wanted to do. And so when I moved back to Christchurch, I was looking for ways to kind of, to start off. I was looking at like an old, old subtle rig and stuff like that. And it wasn't until I, um, I met Braden at one of the subtle sound system gigs and I was talking about how I wanted to build a sound and he mentioned that he, he had built one and he'd be happy to give me a hand. So going to some of those uh, subtle shows, well, there was some, some of the, the main sort of drug for me hearing that and, and like the visceral kind of experience of being in front of a, a stack of speakers. And... A whole bunch of young crew in Christchurch, I, I've got huge respect for. I've got kids nowadays, I don't have the time to get it out much, you know, but I see the vibe that all the young crew roots fire, Chief Remedy, Eyes Down, you know, the list goes on. Apologies if I missed anybody, but the vibe that I see all these younger crew doing is just epic, you know, and you know, you hear of IRE sound coming up the next load through and I'm sure there'll be people that are influenced from them. I'm sure I've influenced some. The person I influence influenced the next guy. That's sort of Kiwis, that's how we do it, you know.
Well, it all sort of started with a crazy idea in my head, thinking I was just going to buy an already hand-built speaker system from Dunedin. And uh, unfortunately, I got a little bit trigger happy and just wanted to do my own thing from scratch, full CNC'd and um, fully professional and put my own name on it. So yeah, I was really lucky and I managed to um, get a good friend called Dan from Zone 2 um, down in Kingston, Queenstown ways. He uh, managed to do the design process for me. So what we did was we went and figured out what sort of sound would suit my sound and we decided to roll with the T60 tuba. He managed to get that plan off the website and we managed to tweak it with these two centre bits for um, strength. And uh, yeah, just decided to put them on a um, computer plan and design and change them up a wee bit and go from there. The production process was pretty simple really. It was just mainly uh, getting the design, tweaking it, um, putting it through a computer program so we could see it all 3D, to understand where, we're, where we were at and what we needed to tweak. Um, and then from there, it was just a matter of paying the invoices, getting the birch timber that we used to CNC it here and get it all um, machined out. And once that was all machined out, it was just a matter of um, getting two builders, cabinet makers to um, put them together. And that was really quick. I think it only really took them about four days for all eight subs. I think it was 2000, 2015. In 2017, uh, Kindred Sound System brought Mungo's Hi-Fi and Charlie P across, played a gig at the Ducks. Al walked into Ducks, saw the stack, heard the music, and that was it. Another day I decided that I'm going to run the sound. I was real interested in like cabinet design and stuff. I was don't really have the, the technical skills like Warwick and Jack him, but I but I love people and, and that kind of thing, so that's kind of where I and then like meeting Warwick and, and Brandon and Jack and this crew and it was just like, a, you know, it was just like people on the same wavelength with the same kind of common goal. And then we're straight at the ground running eh? and then yeah, it took off real quick. And just like a, a bunch of minds on the same, on the same path. So what makes a handmade, homegrown sound system work? How does it work? What is a sub, a tweeter, a crossover, or a scoop. We talk to the experts to get insights as to what makes their sound system tick. In a traditional style sound system like this, it's good to give every frequency band its own box in terms of sound and being able to find that sound and get it as tight as you can and as clean as you can. Uh, Roots Fire Sound is a five-way sound system in saying that it covers five different frequency ranges, i.e. our tweeters, which are high frequencies, compressions, which are high to mid frequencies, 12 inches, which are mid frequencies, low mids, 15-inch drivers, which are your low mid frequencies, the punch from the kick, and 18-inch scoops. So you've got your sub with the super scoop, you've got your USB, which is your kick, you've got your MT121, the 12 part of it, which is the mid, and then you've got your compression driver up the top, which is giving you that really nice sparkle, cracking, imagine birds chirping, that kind of stuff. Uh, I think the place to start is your record record's gonna fire through to your mixer, mixer to soundboard. To power each kind of speaker, we're gonna be using different amplifiers. So our most powerful amplifier will be for the subs, the low end, the biggest speakers that need the most, the mid-range, and then the highs. We've added a compressor onto our subs, a tube compressor, so it gives it the warmth and growl of valve processing. Delays, delays, sirens, microphones. It's basically just a big kid's toy when you really think about it. What you can see essentially is a, is a monoblock. Um, this config can be rearranged into essentially a mini system. It fits in the back of the starlet here. Um, the idea is to be able to transport it around and activate um, the sound system or the micro sound system as we call it, the micro sound system uh, in, in various locations around town. It kind of got born out of the type of thinking that we had after the earthquake, um, which was to mobilise.
the idea is to continue using it around town to sort of, I guess, take the music to the people. You know, that's, a, that's it in essence. What type of communities surround a sound system? Why is a sound system gig different to others? What should you expect? Uh, it's, oh, it's a, like a full sonic experience. Like the system that we've got at the moment is pretty amazing in the way that you can be right up the front and still talk to the person next door to you because it's so clear and all the levels are done so right. It's an audio visual sound experience. Uh, if people turn up to a subtle night, they're going to expect uh, a range of BPM of music between like 140 to 120 going down the pitch scale. Um, obviously, a weighty, it's a bass music, it's full of weight and clarity. Like the way we run our sound, they're all about a, a full sound, which involves clarity and reinforced sub weight. I just really love getting all of my really, really close friends together for a gig. I've got a couple of mates who live up north and stuff like that, so it's nice to actually bring them all together for like a full weekend of just hanging out with your mates, you know what I mean? And it's also nice to see a lot of people that come to the gigs. You see them every couple of months. You might, you might see them at other gigs, but in between that, you don't really see them. So it's really nice to see all those people because as soon as you start building relationships with all those people, they just come to your nights. And it just really helps with kind of getting the vibe right for me personally. That's a huge part of it. And that's a huge part of why I do it. But it's a built for purpose sound system to play music how it's meant to be heard, basically. Um, and yeah, and particularly with reggae music, obviously reggae's got a message and that's generally, you know, one love, happiness, yeah, positivity. Um, so hopefully I think, yeah, that's what people will get if they come to a Chief Remedy session. I think a point of difference for the Chief Remedy sound system is the fact that we're a full spectrum reggae sound system. Uh, the sound system in Otatahi is, uh, the scene is huge and varied and everyone comes from very different places. Part of our role here is to take sound system back to its roots, where it originally came from, and carry that message forward. In Christchurch, you know, like, bass music and dance music has always been popular for years and years and years, and I guess people were, they get inspired, they go to events, they get inspired, and then they think, oh, you, you know, this guy's doing that, I'm gonna do that. I was personally inspired by guys like Lena D and Dillinger with the valve sound system and like those guys were out there doing that and that's what inspired me to do what I do. I wasn't going to become like a career DJ, I just wanted to be a DJ with a sound system and run my own nights and I guess people, that's what other people would just continue on what I guess what I'm doing as well, like it's, it's good to see that uh, crush it just like that. I find that that passion manifests in productivity or creativity. So in the context of sound system culture, that's people wanting to express themselves and the type of music that they love with a sound system that they own, that they've made themselves. It's, you know, it's, it's a hand to ear, you know, music from their hearts, their passionate, what they're passionate about, and then translating that into a sound system that they can share with an audience of some kind. Um, and there happens to be, you know, as you can see probably from this documentary, there's, there's a number of people who, and their extended communities, their whānau, their families, who, who congregate around their own specific style and sound. As soon as I walked into that venue and I, I felt music for the first time, that's what it was, and I felt it for the first time. And I was sold the next day. I was looking up designs. The next day, I was researching now amplifiers, word of the law, that kind of stuff. That was, if that is the defining one for me. Also, having a creative point of difference that no one can touch, being able to be me <laughs> and uh, enjoy it. Yeah. We all come from different backgrounds and stuff, but you know, all the different crews are doing the same thing. We all have the same give and take basically the same goal, the same goal. So um, it's cool to, to start doing these unity things and maybe maybe some clashes. We, we have like a, quite a deep history of sound systems in Christchurch, you know, with kindred sound, bass factory sound and subtle sound. So not only is there more exposure to it, 
and you get to experience it. Um, but you also have that, you have that support to, to go to, to get a jumping off point and to, to talk things through. And I think that's part of the reason that we're so successful in Christchurch is because um, everyone's quite supportive of each other, you know. I think in a lot of scenes, people think that um, people doing the same thing as you are taking away things, taking away venues, taking away punters, where I think we've kind of got a feeling that we can give to each other and we can push because this is not mainstream music. Everybody knows that it sounds better on a big sound system or on a big PA, you know what I mean? So I think that's just a natural progression of sound system and people go, well, we want to go to a gig that has a good sound system. We don't want to play on something small, PA-like, you know what I mean? So I think that would just start coming into the promoter scene as well, where people were promoting gigs and going, I could get a PA that does this, or I could actually get a sound system which can do what I want, what, what, what my international artist wants, and what the punters want. It's important because I feel each sound system draws uh, a, a, you know, a group of people and if there was say only one big system for drum and bass and you know one for reggae, um, the more systems say the reggae and the drum and bass scene have, the more people they're going to pull into the scene. Uh, more sound systems is just a great thing because people get to know which ones they like, which ones are best, you know, have the best parties, which ones sound the best, which ones are the loudest. So many people just love good loud music and that's what draws people to events. If they know that they're going to have a good sound system there and they know they're booking good DJs, well, people are going to turn up. It's got to be clear and it's got to be loud and it's got to be fun, otherwise, you're not really getting the full experience of the music. I've, I've seen people from 10 years old to 70 years old who have never experienced sound system before. And as soon as they're in front of it, that's it for them. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a whole different experience. So it's, I wouldn't know how to explain it. You have to be there. You have to be a part of it. You know, it's because it's not just a sound system and it's not just a gig. There's an, it's, everything else that's involved with it because you don't have to be standing in front of the stack you can be down the back in the smokers area and still be experiencing sound system culture it's it's a it's a community we spoke with local ototahi sound system owners to understand where they believe a sound system's power on the dance floor and future is heading yeah the future for sound systems in christchurch i think what's going to happen is you know you're going to get more people getting into it and more people doing it. It's just, it's just the way it's, the graph essentially you could say is going. You've got these small, smaller little boutique sound systems and then you've got the, like the, the bigger, bigger room sound systems. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see somebody else take it to the next level. And I personally feel like it's just about diversity and um, people not being afraid to show what their perception of music and sound system culture in their own city should be like, or what they want it to be like. I think it will definitely continue to grow, yeah. I think the future holds, you know, uh, it's hard because one K, you know, on one hand we've got all these massive sound systems and people throwing amazing parties, but then on the other hand it's hard because we're uh, lacking in venues, and when we have venues, we get the noise complaint issues. So, yeah, it's a bit of a hard one. I would say that the future holds change. That's the only thing that I have seen over the last 25 years has been that it's push and pull. Things grow and then things uh, diminish. Um, but what is constant has been in Christchurch has been people's love for music. Um, in, in a variety of forms. So, you know, we have a very div diverse musical community and they're, because of the small nature of uh, um, the size of Christchurch, it's, they're quite close. So I think, you know, diversity is definitely going to be our future um, and uh, in, in many different forms. As far as sound system culture is concerned, they, they turn into real things when you 
when you've made them, you know. And real things have a personality, and and in that sense, they they start to live and they have an, they have a life, I suppose. It's a it's a movement. It's a culture. Uh, and I think that definitely shows through here, especially within the old boys, like Messenger, like Goons, like Richie, you know, they're, they're supporting what we have and what's always been here. And it's really just getting exposed to it, I think. Mm. And when you are exposed to it, you can't not be a part of it. That's literally all I want to do. I want to make people smile. I want to make people dance. I want to educate people on where this comes from, why it's still going and of where it's going to be in the future, basically, you know. Oh, uh, you know, there's this kind of thing that is, it's um, a little bit dominated by the old school, you know, which in some ways it is and it always has been. Um, people still try and clasp on the fact that this is my town and we've been running it since back in the day, so we're going to keep running it. But I, I personally think that the new school are the ones that are going to take it to the next level. They already have, you know. I mean, Figsy took it to the next level. You look at my rig, I kind of joke amongst our friends, I call it the rinky-dink sound, you know. It's full analogue, we run off a couple of little epoxy three-way <laughs> mono-crossovers. He took it to the next level and went high professional. You look at eyes down, it blows my mind. You know, Roots Fire following in the same footsteps. Remedy's not far behind. The level is just going like this, so who knows? Irie around the corner might be going to that as well. I just think that it's only going to get better. Uh, I think the most important thing is if people can sort of remember that just because you've got a big sound that it doesn't make you bigger and better than anybody. Everyone's just got to respect and, and, and compliment each other and be stoked for you know, how epic that guy's sound is comparative to this guy. Everyone's doing something epically, you know, cool. So. The one thing that continues to sing true, from the origins of sound system culture in Jamaica, from the evolution through UK dance scenes, right through to the most cutting edge speaker and sound system design is Unity. A united audience, a local united sound system whānau and a united purpose. The sound system scene in Ōtotahi have built an international reputation for being a bass heavy underground musical destination. But it didn't happen overnight. From the DJs to promoters to radio punks, they all brought the sound of the people to the sound system. They congregated, immersed themselves and experienced the music that was made to be delivered with power. From the old to the new, passing on history, passing on knowledge, teaching each other how to create and what it means to build a unified city of sound. The Ōtotahi Sound System community, its supporters and the music industry that surrounds it continue to bring people together.